Hi everyone, I'm a lawyer studying and working on data protection and technology law and a member of Women in AI. We are a global non-profit organization that works towards gender-inclusive AI that benefits global society. Our main goal is to increase the number of female participants and include people from different backgrounds. Today, in this video, we will review the EU's white paper on artificial intelligence. So, let me start by defining AI as systems that display intelligent behavior by analyzing their environments and taking actions with some degree of autonomy to achieve specific goals. Although AI is inherently considered a tech discipline, in this video we will focus on the legal aspects of AI operations. Artificial intelligence has an impact on fundamental rights, such as the right to not to be discriminated against, fair trial, and of course, privacy. What if an AI algorithm predicts a wrong result or causes harm for an individual? Who would be responsible? Those are the big questions that concern law and legal practice. In the last couple of years, there has been a strong need for a rapid legal update to find answers to such important questions. And EU finally took a new significant step and published the document called White Paper in February 2020. The White Paper is aligned with the key principles set out in the Guidelines on Trustworthy AI published by the EU High-Level Expert Group on Artificial Intelligence. These guidelines state that trustworthy AI should be lawful, ethical and robust. After its publication, the White Paper was open to stakeholders' public consultation for 100 days. The consultation period is now over and we are waiting EU to come up with a new regulation which will be used for future AI technologies. Meanwhile, let's have a detailed look at what the White Paper introduces. There is a significant innovation as the White Paper describes in so-called high-risk AI. So, what do we mean by high-risk AI application? Well, there are some key elements outlined for that. The first one we need to look at is whether an AI system is used by a high-risk sector. That means if you are using AI, particularly in sectors like healthcare, transport, pharmaceuticals, recruitment, energy, or part of the public sector, this is going to be considered as a high-risk AI application, according to the white paper. Secondly, if the AI is used in a way that significant risks are likely to arise, such as injury or even death, this will also result in an AI application being high risk. And it should be noted that these two criteria are cumulative. Such high risk applications will be subject to prior conformity assessments to ensure they comply with the mandatory requirements which have been proposed by the Commission. This means that regardless of the location, the AI system will be subject to rigorous testing and validation before entering the internal EU market. There are a few more observations that are worth highlighting from the white paper. For the first one, human oversight should remain in place when using artificial intelligence. Because sometimes the consequences of AI might be difficult to predict, depending on the station, the goal or method or algorithm in use. The second one, Screen liability should be imposed where a product contains defective software or other digital features. Because again, even though AI is a system that learns from data, the designer of such a system is still a human being. Therefore, if damage occurs, that should be compensated. And yet, very important step, decision tracing. If damage occurs, the consumer should not have to prove the harm. This is due to the Commission suggesting reversing the burden of proof. This will likely be one of the game changers in AI law relationship. Of course, EU's plan to create an ethical framework for future AI operations. Therefore, the Commission also focuses on transparency, bias and explainability of black box in AI systems. To the extent that their AI applications process personal data, the GDPR will apply. So, if AI applications begin to process personal data in a manner which is different to the original purpose for which they were collected, then this will be a breach of the GDPR. Purpose limitation is just one element of the GDPR, which must be considered by AI developers and regulators alike. And the White Paper notes that the Commission will be monitoring the application on a continuous basis to assess whether AI will result in additional risks to privacy, which may not be covered by it. Overall, we can say that the EU encourages various sectors use AI as long as it's trustworthy and enhances current practices. 
However, it should be in the ethical framework as the Commission is taking risk-based and sector-specific approach in the white paper. We know that the GDPR debate lasted for five years. Of course, we won't accept to have a detailed rule of law in a couple of months, but we hope that the EU Commission will keep up artificial intelligence with a binding regulation in the near future. If you're a legal practitioner with focus on AI and would like to find out more about what we do, please visit our website womeninai.co. If you are interested in becoming a member, you can do so by registering through the link below in this video. Our next topic in law and AI will be the most recent paper from the EU Parliament on the impact of the GDPR on artificial intelligence that I will discuss next month. Thank you for watching.